All right. Um, one of the things that's uh, interesting about this particular press is that this is a joystick press as opposed to a micro press. And uh, when I invented this thing, uh, it happened quite by accident. I was trying to figure out a way of getting around micros and taking some expense out of the press. And at about 3 in the morning, this idea came to me, and I raced out in the shop and produced it, and it actually worked. So one of the things about this is, is you're using your two hands, and for some unknown reason, they follow each other. So you can look straight into the image all the time. You don't have to look back and forth to see where you're going. So you have quite a bit of control um, when you're adjusting the press. There's also another feature of this that will tell you real quick if you've got the screen leveled correctly with a platen. If you're having a, a stiff adjustment with a joystick, basically that's telling you you need to go back in here and adjust this subtly so that there's no load. There's a little bit of clearance in between these plates, so if it's off just a little bit, it'll provide some drag on here. So uh, that's kind of a built-in way to tell you that you need to give a little more attention to these three, uh, three bolts to make sure this is dead simple to use. So once you're done, tighten that back up as much as you can with your fingers and a quarter of a turn. On these uh, uh, bolts for the screen clamp, by the way, if you've registered your screen, do not come back in and put more pressure on these knobs because this is just a glorified C-clamp. And the more you twist them, the more you open the jaws and the more you change your image location. So do yourself a favor, set this torque correctly to begin with, and don't mess with it again. When you're starting to register a job, what position should the joystick be in? Well, I'd like to see it be basically in the middle, so you've got a full range of motion. When we ship these from the factory, we've got the joystick in the full back position, so it takes up the least amount of space in the crate. But when you're starting it out, try and get it just about in the middle like we've got it here. What kind of room leeway do you have through the joystick movement? Uh, we're basically in the uh, three, quarters, three quarters of an inch range, which um, is uh, more than adequate. What I like to see happen is uh, the three elements of uh, screen making all put together at the same time, wherein you have a basic image of where the uh, screen uh, is going to be, where the image is going to be, and how that fits the shirt board where the distance is from the back of the shirt board to the front face of the clamp should be about an inch, so you've got some room, and where the back of the screen's going to be. If you center line all this stuff, then your artist knows that the image has to fit the shirt board. Uh, the person who's burning the screen is going to put the uh, screen in the back position, center that up, and put the image where it's supposed to be, and then the printer when they set the press up, uh, it's going to be very close to begin with. So the total turnaround time is much, much faster than if all those three elements are separate from each other and you've got to chase it around. So now that we've set the press up, you're going to be using this press for years to come. And there are some maintenance issues and some things that you don't want to do on the press to ensure the quality and the lifespan of the machine. Riley, why don't you touch on some of those? Well, um, there's a interesting controversy that's been going on for about 35 years uh, over nylon bolts versus uh, uh, steel bearings with steel registration uh, plates and that sort of thing. Um, personally, I've chosen to use a sacrificial part, which are these nylon bolts, so it doesn't score the uh, uh, aluminum bolt or the aluminum uh, registration block, which goes out four decimal points, and if this gets worn, the press won't work. Now, we have had uh, some rocket scientists replace these nylon bolts with steel and then wonder why the press is shot. Um, so that's one of those things that's a preference deal. I've not had uh, problems with this for the 35 years that we've been building these presses, but 
other salesmen like to point it out as though there's some sort of a big bugaboo for using them. But if there was a bugaboo, um, we wouldn't be selling as many presses as we do and have them in service for as long as we do. Well, it makes pretty good sense. You don't have metal rubbing on metal. And then what? how much does this part cost to replace and how often do you think it needs to be replaced? Well, that's a uh, bone crushing $3 a piece. And um, there's you know a good five years worth of wear on these things. So uh, the other deal on that too is that when you set this clearance, um, you don't need to uh, put it in tight. You can kind of finger tighten it and then just go about a quarter of a turn on the jam nut because this is nylon and if you treat it like a regular bolt, you'll snap the, uh, the head of the thing off, then it's three bucks. So this is the jam nut right here? That's correct. Okay, you want to tighten that down so the bolt doesn't move out? Right, just a little bit. And as the bolt wears down, you'll start to maybe feel a little bit give, and then you just give it. Is, do you have to tighten them both at the same distance? Um, basically, that's up to you. It depends on where your center line is, where your screen is. Typically, uh, what I like to do is just have, you know, check the press in the morning to make sure that it's copacetic. If it's got a little play in it, just tighten it up and you're there. Good. Now, we noticed that a lot of presses register and you can adjust the all contact differently. Mm -hmm. um, this center line gate bowl right here uh, is typically, on some other presses, on very basic presses, you take a bolt like that to adjust the off contact. Right. In this case, uh, it says do not touch here. What is the purpose of this bolt? Well, um, there are some philosophical differences about adjusting uh, that position up and down for off contact. And <clears throat> if you look at this thing from an engineering standpoint and trace the trajectories of all of these angles. Uh, we set this up so that this registration block and print arm was just slightly down. So uh, when this comes up, the liftoff for the screen is as close as we can get it to a straight line. Uh, but if somebody starts uh, horsing around with this thing for an instant off contact, all of a sudden the press will not print correctly. As you guys register these at the factory, so they're all relative to each other. That's correct. And, you know, the other thing is there's this term leveling. And uh, occasionally we'll get somebody that says, well, gee, you know, we, uh, we leveled the press and um, it wasn't level. And so we go, uh, well, what do you mean? And uh, they said, well, we put a level on this thing and it wasn't level. Well, the only place that leveling has anything to do with anything is the center of the press right here just to set the rotation. Uh, when we set these presses up at the factory, all we're trying to do is make sure that each one of these platens is relative to the control platen, so they all print the same. They may be slightly off, uh, they may be, one might be higher than the other, but in reality, when you put the screen in, they all hit at exactly the same place. So the leveling is relative to itself, not the surface of the earth. Correct, correct. But there again, that's part of this rocket science thing. You know, it's, uh, this press is very, very, very simple as long as you use our instructions. If you don't, all is lost. What are some other maintenance things you need to do? Uh, talk a little bit about spring replacement, how long those last, if there's any spots on the press you need to lubricate. Um, these um, springs are uh, sort of relative in the 35 years that we've been using these springs. Uh, I've never had a spring company give me a warranty on them ever. So uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a crapshoot. Uh, some, uh, some people have to replace springs about every 10 years, something like that. Um, to do that, it's pretty simple you put the arm in the down position, take this top stop bolt out, lift the arm straight up, and it'll relax the uh, back end of the springs so you can replace them. But typically, you shouldn't have to be uh, replacing springs uh, on a regular basis at all. Uh, this has a uh, uh, spring protector on it as well so that uh, we're not talking about a whole bunch of shrapnel uh, 